Hello everyone. Welcome to block number seven of our mystery quilt called Dream, Hope, and Love. Before we get started this week, I have a special invitation for those of you who have been following along and have made blocks one, two, three, four, five, and six up till this point. We are going into the second half of the mystery quilt and I have enjoyed seeing your pictures so much and would like to invite you to take one picture of all of your blocks so that we can make a slideshow and feature your quilts up until this point in next week's video. So we have one week to gather all of your pictures if you would like to be included in the slideshow. Join me over on Facebook. You'll find my Facebook link in the description box below. Scroll down until you find the post. It will be a special invitation. And within the comment section of that post, share your picture. And I will gather everyone's pictures up until the very last minute and include you in Block 8's video a week from today. I think everyone would really love to see your work. I know that I have enjoyed seeing your progress and uh, making the blocks up until now. I think it is so fun to see how people are thinking outside of the box and adding embellishments to their block or adding applique pieces to their blocks. We even have some of the blocks that are in another language. So how exciting is that? I would love to share your pictures and uh, so we have one week to gather them. Now let's get started with block number seven. As we get started and before I open up the binder, I just want to say real quick, I would love to share your picture even if you have not finished all six blocks up until now. I am hoping that you are taking your time and enjoying the progress. So do not feel like you have to hurry up and finish all six blocks to be included in the slideshow. Take a picture of the blocks that you have completed up until now and I would love to include you in the slideshow. So do not feel like you have to hurry up and rush. Now let's get started with block number seven. Last week's block was called Angels Amongst Us and this was the block that we did last week. Block number seven is called All My Love. It is three hearts appliqued onto three different backgrounds and when this block is constructed it will measure 18 and a half inches wide and 12 and a half inches tall. This week we have done tons and tons of raw edge applique up until this point. I want to show you three different stitches and turned applique. Let's take a look at what that block looks like with turned applique. And here we are. This is one of my finished block number sevens, All My Love. You can see I've done three hearts, all of which have been done with turned applique. I have demonstrated three different stitches, and so when they're finished, you really cannot tell a difference. This first stitch was a blind hemming stitch. The second heart in the middle was hand stitched down, and the heart on the right was done with a blanket stitch. All three of these stitches we're going to show you in today's video and I will show you how I use freezer paper to turn under the raw edge of our applique. So it's going to be a lot of information in today's video. Let's take a look at the pattern for block number seven. Here we go. And if you are mapping along with us, Gather your map and we will uh, position our block number seven. If you are mapping along with us, somewhere located in your pattern, you will find block number seven. If you cut that out on the line, the placement for this block is very easy. We will come down to the left bottom corner and block number seven goes directly underneath of the birdhouse. So we will just tape that into position and there is the bottom of our quilt. Won't that be so cute? 
Now let's take a look at this pattern. Of course you have the cover sheet and applique instructions. Today we're going to do something different than raw edge applique. And so turned edge applique is at the very bottom. This is your heart uh, template. If you want to do a raw edge applique and uh, a satin stitch or some kind of other stitch to stitch this down, then you are more than free to do that. I thought today's video, we would just show you another option uh, for doing applique. And then we have one sheet of instructions. So let's go over these instructions really quick. For the construction of this block, you will need three pieces of background fabric that are six and a half inches wide by 12 and a half inches tall. And so I have already pre-cut my backgrounds. Now, if you've been following along, you know that all of my background fabrics have been just a natural color muslin because I wanted each one of my hearts to be different. I have chosen uh, different clothing pieces for my background of this block. They have already been pre-cut. And you will need scrap fabrics that are larger than your template piece. Now, let me just be very honest because I believe in being transparent in my videos and I don't mind telling you when I struggle. I made my hearts, these have already, the. The raw edge has already been turned on at my hearts. Because I used clothing that needed to be stabilized, I tried it without the stabilizer first and that was not working very well. So then I stabilized my fabric. I am using clothing. And it was a very, very thick. So I am not going to demonstrate with the clothing how to do the turned applique portion or how to turn under your edges. I will be using uh, just some regular quilters cotton for that part of the demonstration. I struggled so much to get these just right. And so it is much easier if you use just some normal uh, cotton fabric. And so we will show you with a different piece. But I have my three hearts ready to stitch down. And when we do the three different stitches, I will be using these hearts here. And that is really it. You will need freezer paper if you want to follow along in this method. And you will need uh, a needle for hand sewing if you'd like to hand sew your hearts down. You will need some starch and you can use um, spray starch and spray some into a small cup or you can use liquid starch like what I have here. I buy this at Walmart and it comes in a huge bottle <laughs> and this lasts me forever. And uh, I love the consistency of this starch. And so I just pour some in a small cup and you will need a brush, just like something like this, to brush on the starch. If you are doing raw edge applique, you will need uh, some type of fusible and uh, so you'll be ready to get started and I'm hoping that even if you do the raw edge applique that you follow along and uh, maybe attempt something like this down the road. Alright, I'm ready to heat up the iron and we will begin. From my roll of freezer paper, I cut three pieces just like this. Just like that. Now you'll notice with the freezer paper, it has a dull side and then a shiny side. We are working from the dull side. Take a marker or pencil and a trace on one of your pieces, the heart shape. And you can see, you can see right through the freezer paper. Once you have your heart shape, take all three pieces of your freezer paper and bring this to your ironing board and press it until all three pieces of paper stick together. And this will form a nice heavy duty template that we're gonna use to turn the edges of our hearts. You can see this is the one that I did all of my hearts just like this. 
What happens is the shiny side, when pressed to your fabric, will stick to your fabric long enough for you to use it as a template. When we've added three layers, it gives a nice good surface, thick enough that withstands all of the turning of the edges and the pressing. <laughs> so. Uh, you can reuse this over and over again. I made nine hearts with this one template and there is still plenty of life that if I wanted to keep using this template, I could keep doing that. Eventually, it will get uh, lint and uh, start to lose the ability to be fused to fabric. So at that point, you would have to make a new one just like we're going to do here but you can reuse it until it stops sticking to your fabric. I will go ahead and bring the pressing surface over. I do believe we're going to do double time on the rest of the video or the majority because I have so much to show you and I don't want to keep you here all day. I would love for you to get busy in your sewing room or with other things that you have going on. So. Let's cram all of this information into uh, what I'm hoping will be a much shorter video. We will see. I can't make any promises. <laughs> so let me heat up my iron and bring that over. I am at the pressing board now and we're going to take all three layers of freezer paper and stack them on top of each other and just heat set these with the iron on a cotton setting with no steam until they fuse to each other to create a thicker template. This just takes a second and once they are all fused together we can go ahead and cut out our template shape making sure to have nice smooth edges all the way around. Coming into the center of the heart and then back around and then we will have our template. Once we are finished with our template we can bring in our fabric. I've already pressed my fabric and I'm working from the back side with the right side down I'm going to fuse my heart template onto the back side of my fabric with the shiny side of the template fused to the fabric. I'm using a cotton setting with no steam and you'll be able to tell when the template is adhered to the fabric. It just stays just like that. Now we're going to trim off the excess fabric and I give myself about a quarter of an inch all the way around the template. This is the raw edge that we will fold over top of the freezer paper, giving us a nice pretty finish. And now I have my little baby iron set at a setting of four, which is the highest that it will go. And with my brush, I'm going to take the liquid starch that I've poured into a cup and apply it to the raw edge of the fabric, everything that hangs over the paper template. And just brush that liberally on the fabric. And now with a wooden awl, I'm going to come in and flip that raw edge over top of the paper and heat set that with the iron. And that just glue or dries the starch as you go along the edge. I'm trying to figure out a good place to <laughs> position the template so that my hands don't get in the way. Working from the bottom of the heart towards the top. I'm just using my awl as a tool so that I don't burn my fingers. See this pretty edge? We will continue to go around the side of the heart working up towards the first curve. And I'm just pulling that fabric 
snugly against the edge of the template. That's why three layers of freezer paper gives you a nice sturdy template to work with. Continuing on until we get to the center of the heart. And the center of the heart is probably the one area that you want to pay close attention to because we have small bits of fabric that work into the small V shape in the center. And you want to make sure you get all of those bits of fabric turned over the edge. Once this side is done, see how pretty? We can start applying starch to the other half of the heart and then work our way down. This time we're going to start at the center of the heart at the top and work our way back down to the very bottom tip of the heart. Now once we get to the tip, and I will show you here in just a second, it's going to create a little flag or a little <laughs> tag. And I like to leave those tags on there, especially if I'm going to sew my applique by hand. When sewing by hand, I can simply tuck that tag up underneath the heart with the needle. It's fairly to easy to do if you're using a qu uh, quilter's cotton. Uh, using the clothing, that little tag is so thick that I do struggle and you'll see that coming up. <laughs> but usually I just leave that on there and tuck it up underneath of the applique. We're coming down to the bottom. We're going to fold that edge over. And now you will see the little tag at the bottom. Right there. But look how pretty our heart is. Once it's nice and cool, I just take my awl and loosen up the edge of the fabric, pull the stencil out, and then straighten everything back up. And you'll be amazed at how well the fabric keeps the shape that you've ironed everything into. Give this a press, and you're ready to continue on. Once you have all three heart appliques ready to go, I like to bring in my three blocks and line them up. I'm going to bring in a ruler and just measure from the top about two and a half inches from the top. This long ruler helps me make sure that all of my three hearts are lined up exactly the same on each three of my backgrounds. Once I have the placement all set, I'm going to bring in some Elmer's glue. And my bottle is going to clog up. <laughs> I struggle sometimes. Once I'm ready to start gluing, I like to come in with very small dots about an inch away from each other. All the way around the edge of the heart, making sure to stay away from the very edge. If you're going to do any hand sewing, the glue would uh, make it a little bit harder to go through the fabrics. And so I do like to stay away from the edge of the applique piece. I will put that into place and then continue gluing the other two hearts in the same manner. Small little tiny dots all the way around. And once this last heart is glued, I'll put it into position and bring in a pressing cloth and my iron. And I will heat set the little glue dots and make sure that all of the glue is dry. 
the pressing cloth just protects all of the clothing that I'm using and I can use some steam and quickly dry that glue and be able to work with each one of the blocks and there we go we are going to start our stitching today with the hand stitch I will show you how I tie the knot on my thread I bring the very end of my thread and lay my needle directly on top of the thread tail wrap the thread around the needle about five or six times with my thumb I will pinch all of those wraps and bring everything straight off the needle all the way down the length of the thread to the very end forming a perfect little knot the next thing I like to do is bring in some thread magic and just run my thread straight through there and that prevents any twisting or knotting of my thread while we're doing all of the hand stitches and we are ready to begin I do apologize I'm using a black thread and my heart is black and so it's very difficult to see exactly what I'm doing here <laughs> I should probably redo another video showing a close-up of this stitch I'm going to come in from behind my block starting from underneath of the fabric coming straight up through the applique to begin with at the very very edge of the applique I will then take my needle and travel behind the applique going through the background fabric traveling a small distance and when I come back up to the top I am coming up through the applique right at the very very edge going back down to the back of the block I'm traveling underneath of the applique a small distance coming back up through the heart on the very edge again I, I do realize it is very hard to see <laughs> exactly what I'm doing my apologies if you've watched any of my previous videos I've mentioned several times hand sewing is not one of my favorite things to do however when I'm traveling or I know I'm going to be gone somewhere for any amount of time I do like bringing small projects that I can work on and so hand stitching applique is probably one of my favorite things to bring along out and about we are just traveling with small stitches all the way around the heart I tried to zoom in on this so that you could see closer but everything just got fuzzy and so <laughs> we are just going to pretend like we can see exactly what I'm doing <laughs> again down through the background fabric coming up through the heart on the very edge when I get to the very bottom of my heart this is usually where I take my needle and just tuck the little tag that's hanging out of the uh, of the turned edge up underneath again this clothing with the stabilizer was so thick that I'm just struggling at this point but I do manage to get it and now we will begin to travel back up the right side of the heart just grabbing the very tip of the applique as we come up to the top of the block
This creates an almost completely invisible stitch, however, <laughs> using a matching thread to your applique. So while I do know that it is impossible to see exactly what I'm doing, I am very pleased with my stitches when I'm done. <laughs> We're going to come back around this top curve of the heart and when we get back to where we started I would take the needle from the top of the block straight through to the back and then I will do some small slip knots just grabbing a small bit of the background fabric and do three little knots and tie that off and clip my threads and this is the hand stitching. Now that we have the hand sewing all done, <laughs> let's talk about the blind hemming stitch and the blanket stitch. I'm just going to draw out what the blind hemming stitch would look like. Your machine is going to take a few straight stitches. Go to the left and create a little V shape in your applique. Travel back to the right and do a few more straight stitches and continue that all the way around. A blanket stitch, your machine will take a few straight stitches, then start to the left and then travel directly right back to the right, creating a straight line stitch. Take a few more straight stitches, go to the left, back to the right, and then do a few more straight stitches and that creates a blanket stitch. We will begin with the blind hemming stitch and a sure way to break a needle very quickly is to have the wrong pressing foot on your machine. <laughs> so make sure you use the correct pressing foot your needle needs to be able to move in the left and right position. And now we're ready to start. We will bring the needle right next to the turned edge of our applique. And we will be traveling in the background right next to our heart. And when the needle forms the little small V, to the left, that's when it's going to actually take a small bite into our applique, securing our applique to the background. Make sure that whenever you stop and turn your fabric, your needle is in the down position. Staying right next to, snugly against your applique. Each machine is different and so uh, and so is your fabrics and so the settings for your blind hemming stitch will vary depending on your your project. I do recommend bringing over a scrap piece of fabric and testing the stitch width and the stitch length. Here I've decided I am not going to try to fit the very thick little tag hanging over the edge, so I will just cut this one. Making sure not to clip my turned edge. And then continue sewing on. I will move my beginning threads over to the side. And once we have finished, we will bring the top threads from where we started and where we stop to the back side of the block and tie everything into knots because we do not do any back stitching at the beginning or the end. I will try to show you up close what the blind hem stitch looks like. And if you use a thread color that blends into your applique, then you can almost 
There we go. Hardly see the stitch. There's the little tiny V. Just takes a little small bite of the applique. We will show you from the back side what the little V's look like. And this is probably my favorite one when stitching down applique when the edges have been turned. Next we will come in with the blanket stitch. Now this one, I do recommend using a thread that matches your applique and not the background. But in doing so, I have a denim background on this block and I'm using a white thread. So you will be able to see everywhere I travel and I'm not so crazy about that. So I'm thinking maybe I should have used like an invisible thread a clear thread or monofilament thread. Again, we are traveling right next to the applique all the way around. And when the needle goes to the left and creates the little straight line, it's biting into the fabric as we stitch all the way down and around our heart. And no matter the machine settings with my machine, I just cannot get a perfectly beautiful blanket stitch. I've tried adjusting every setting <laughs> and I'm just not very pleased with my blanket stitch. That's probably why I prefer the blind hemming stitch. We are coming back to the beginning and now I will show you what we do with our threads. Let's take a close look at the blanket stitch first. And a close up of my fabric. <laughs> You can see it much better from the back. And there we go. To finish off our block, I bring the top threads where we started and stopped to the back. To do that, I'm looking at the back of my block. I would take the first thread where we started stitching and give that a small tug. I need my glasses. And that will create a small little tiny loop. Once the loop comes to the back, that is the thread that's on top, I just stick something small and pointy in the loop and bring that thread straight to the back. You will have a thread where you started stitching and a second thread where we stopped stitching. Bring both of those to the back and tie a double knot. Usually I'm not okay with just two. I go for a third time, so I will tie three knots just to be on the safe side. There's one, two, and the OCD in me says go for the third time. Trim your threads and your little block is finished. And here we are, our finished block number seven. Once I took my top threads and brought them back to the back, I secured them with a knot and just trimmed them. And then I joined my three blocks in these two seams here with a quarter inch seam allowance 
pressing everything when it was done. So this is so, so pretty. Just to recap, today I showed you how to turn under the edges to do turned applique with a freezer paper template. So now I have this pretty heart that I can use in another project. And I showed you three different stitches. We did a hand stitch, we did a blind hemming stitch, and a blanket stitch. And what I really love about all three of those is that you can hardly see the stitches once the block is finished. Even from this distance, I don't see the stitches whatsoever, and I really love that. And in some projects, when I'm not in a hurry and I don't do a raw edge applique, then this is so worth the time involved. If you have any questions about any of the things that I showed you today, you can jump down to the comment section below this video. You can also join me on Facebook. Again, my link is in the description box below. I would love to see your pictures of your block if you want to share them with me. I will post my finished block on my Facebook page and you can jump to the comment section below this post and share your block with me. I love this and I'm also hoping that you join me and share your pictures of your quilt so you can be in the slideshow next week. Until I talk to you then, I hope you have a fantastic week. We will see you later.